what is up youtube welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel now welcome back go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless you just got bad taste and if that's the case you're not alone but i don't know what to tell you i'm gonna let you know right now mother is going to have a glass of wine with this video because my nerves are bad they shy girl i just had a terrible experience and i'm about to tell y'all about my horrifying experience before we get into today's story so if you don't care you can go ahead and fast forward a couple minutes let me tell you what just happened to me behind me these doors lead to a patio space and i put down turf for blue to go out there and sunbathe because he likes to do that in the grass while we walk in so i built him a little section where he can do that and not inconvenience me at the same time so blue's lawn is right out there blue goes out there at least like twice a day to just max and relax and do his thing right and i'm just constantly closing the door behind him prior to this incident i never locked the door because we're one of the higher floors and i figure like i really probably don't have to lock the door which is kind of dumb but i'm just letting you know my way of thinking child i'm just gonna tell you as as things happened anyhow so the other night i get out of my bed i'm coming to the kitchen to get a drink of water and i pass by the door and it is wide open and i'm like what the hell but at the same time i'm thinking that maybe i didn't close the door all the way and the wind just blew the door open never did it cross my little mind that an intruder had actually opened the door child or that they could still be inside my home i think it's odd I had a little feeling in my stomach close the door get my little water check the front door to make sure it's locked go back to bed not knowing at all that there was in fact an intruder that I have now locked inside of my apartment. So I go to bed, wake up about 6.30 a.m. Typical time that me and Blue start our day. I feed him, take him on his morning walk. Now his morning walk is really short because Blue likes to get back in and go back to sleep. So we're only downstairs for like no more than 10 minutes. Y'all, when I come back inside of my apartment, as soon as I close the door, I look up and in my living room, I see a huge black cockroach coming down the wall like it pays rent and this is the thing if you've been here a while or if you've watched like my non-true crime videos you probably already know this about me i can kill a spider pick it up with some tissue throw her in the toilet and flush her down to her final resting place i could battle a beetle i probably can go toe to toe with a little garden snake you know what i'm saying but a cockroach i don't feel like that I have two responses to a cockroach in my presence, child. Fight or flight. And the thing is, I know a lot of y'all are probably like, cockroaches, are they're harmless. Like, they don't bite or any of the things. I don't care what their specialty is or is not. I just don't play them reindeer games. I just do not. I have not and I will not, okay? So I scream. This is how I know my neighbors don't give a damn about me because I let out this whole blood curdling scream. Girl, they didn't even bother to ring the alarm and call for at least a courtesy officer to make sure I was okay. None of it, girl. Nobody showed up to save me. And Blue is looking like, girl, what's wrong? He is like panicking like what what when i kill like a little fly or something he'll try to eat it he actually didn't he didn't have him a few flies in his day so i know he would have tried to eat this thing granted they was about the same size the thing was huge baby they say everything is bigger in texas it includes the cockroaches okay the cockroaches here i've never in my life seen one so big so at this point i'm panicking i'm crying and i'm just like i don't know what to do meanwhile he's just going up the wall girl let me tell you something if you want to rob me you don't need a weapon you don't need a little piece of knife nor a piece of gun. Pull a cockroach out your back pocket, baby. You can have it all. Because what I don't want is for that bitch to touch me, okay? If you want to steal my car, throw a cockroach through the passenger side window and I'm out of there. I do not play with them. One in my presence is always going to activate the flight response. I'm out of there. And if you try to play with me and corner me with one, because I've had somebody do this to me one time in my life, baby, that will activate the fight response, okay? You gonna get the two piece and you gonna have to get the biscuit. I'm gonna knock both of y'all's head off before I just allow you to touch me with it. You're not touching me with it without a fight. So anyway, I grab Blue up, because child, the last thing I want is for him to eat one. I don't even see how I could love him after the fact. Like, how am I supposed to touch you with the cockroach in your belly? I just couldn't. So I take Blue downstairs with me to the leasing office, and the lady's like, hi, how are you doing? And I'm just like, I'm not good. I had just wiped my tears before I got off the elevator child again like i was in shambles so i know she probably thought like it was something more serious or like more harmful going on because she was just like oh my god come in and sit down and i'm just like no like now i'm laughing but honestly in the moment it was very serious and child i was fighting back then so i'm just like no and she's like what's wrong and i barely could get it out but i managed to tell her that pretty much i need a member of maintenance because there is a huge cockroach coming down 
my living room wall. The maintenance guy, he comes in and can you believe he was in here hiding like he was the victim child? He was literally nowhere. And I'm just like, this is the worst thing because what if he is in my cereal? Like, what if he doesn't find him? He was like an investigator on a crime scene. He was like, so what's your version of events? I'm like, now he being more dramatic than me talking about what's my version of events. So I tell him about the patio door. I tell him, look, this is where I saw him. He came up the wall, made a left. Don't know where he went from there. Can't tell you. He moves the furniture and he sees him. He's like, oh, here he is on his back. I'm like, look, sir, I cannot see it. So I'm going to leave with my dog because I can't I can't see it and he was just like I understand so then he comes back he was so nice and he was just like I'm just gonna you know take a look around like in your plants and stuff just to make sure another one didn't come in where there's not any more so he is looking around and he's just like oh he was back there like this and I'm like sir I said I didn't want to see it I don't want to see the cockroach and I don't want to see a reenactment of the cockroach I don't want to see any of the things girl please Spare me the details. So he looks around, shakes my plants, all of that, and leaves. And I've been stressed out ever since, because what if he laid an egg or something? When the pest control guy comes back out, he's supposed to come and spray inside my unit and my patio. But I'm still stressed out because that was a lot. That was a lot. And I'm trying to can, but I can't. Anyway, I know I've been gone for a minute and I know I look a little different. You know, I'm very much giving brown skin, girl. And that's because I've been in Hawaii on vacation. I had a sister's trip. It was great. Aside from me almost dying in the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, if you will. I still have to tell y'all about how I almost lost my life to a green sea turtle. I have really been going through. This is why I'm drinking this wine today. I have really been going through. So I'm just going to put it in because I don't want the opening of this video to be like 20 minutes long. Today's video is about a guy named James Ruppert. This is a requested video by a beautiful lady by the name of, I believe it's Naja, Naja J. Cunningham. Girl, if I butchered your name, I'm so sorry about it. And I don't remember if she requested it here on, on YouTube or on Instagram. Whatever the case, Miss Mama suggested it. So today we're going to talk about it. James Urban Rupert was born on March 29th of 1934. And sis is an Aries. So you know what that's going to give. Not a whole lot of money. Just a whole lot of violence. James is born the second son to Charity and Leonard and his life was just a mess from the start okay his mother did not want another son she really wanted a girl she did not want to be the only female in the house and so when James came sliding out with his little twig and berries she was very much disappointed by that she did not let it go she would make mean nasty little remarks to him all the time throughout his childhood about how he was supposed to be or should have been a little girl as if that was his fault she will always express this disappointment for him being another son and say things like she should have just never had him in the first place he was definitely a mistake had she known she was gonna have another son child she just never would have even gotten pregnant apparently he was a child but there is no proof of that on the internet. There are no childhood pictures of him, so I'm so sorry about it. His father is equally toxic because Leonard had a nasty little attitude problem and anger issue, and he will oftentimes make his sons the subject of his rage. He was also one of those fathers that did not believe in showing affection to his sons because he felt like it would make them soft. He felt like withholding affection would make them big, strong men, ready for the world and tough. The small family, they didn't have a whole lot of money or a whole lot of anything. They lived in a very small barn-like structure that did not have running water. It did not have indoor plumbing. Now, Leonard Sr., their father, he raised chickens and squabs in the rear of the house. And the boys are, of course, expected to help him out as much as possible. While their mother tends to the chores around the house, they were very much into gender roles traditional gender roles maybe that's why little charity was mad she felt like you know what if it was another girl around here i'll have some help i don't know i'm just speculating that being the reason the problem with this is little james he had a little touch of asthma so he couldn't really be doing all of that amongst the chickens and the squabs because it would cause him to have these asthma related issues he get one or two little pieces of dust and feathers up in his system and there he goes having a full-on asthma attack 
And even though they take him to the doctor and this is explained to his parents that it's asthma, it's not just him being traumatic or anything like that, they still view it as a weakness. His father taunted him about it, teased him about it all the time, talks down on him and berates him for his inability to perform basic physical activities. So he was a jerk. Now, because of his asthma, he is also prevented from participating in like school sports or playing sports amongst the neighborhood children he couldn't even participate in gym at school and his non-participation in like physical activities and all of the things stereotypically related to you know being a rough tough little boy also paired with his shy and introverted demeanor made him a very easy target for bullies child the bullies would taunt him and accuse him of being gay all the time so he just couldn't catch a break because his dad was horrible and a jerk at home and then he had to go out and deal with these rude little children. There were a few kids who felt bad for him and had empathy for him. They would refuse to participate in the taunting of little James, but they would not dare be his friend. So he just does not receive much of any type of comfort. Now when James is just 12 years old, his father suddenly passes away from complications of tuberculosis. He is just 36 years old. Both boys are then forced to pretty much take over the adult responsibilities of their father, like the tending to the birds and just, I guess, taking out the trash, squirrel, all of the things that the men usually did in Charity's household. His brother, being two years older than him at 14, assumes the role of man of the house and unfortunately also takes on the role of James' very own personal Bully. Charity does not ease up on her young son either. Both of them are very hard on James, especially now seeing him grow up to be very shy, very timid. They felt like being hard on him, being rough with him and tough with him would toughen him up. And so Charity actually encourages Leonard Jr. to do him the same way that their father did him, like make him a man, make him tough, make him strong. Charity adored her older son Leonard because in her mind, he was exactly as he should be. He played sports in school. He had this macho demeanor, this toxic masculinity child. And she admired this about her son a whole lot. On the contrary, with James being the exact opposite and him getting older and not really changing, she really begins to push Leonard Jr. to help mold his little brother and be tougher on him. And Leonard would do weird, weird stuff to James. He would lock him in closets, restrain Drain and tie him up with rope beat him sometimes with a water hose and no matter how far he took it charity always supported leonard she always backed him up and she never once stepped in to protect her younger son she felt like he should man up when james gets to high school he continues to struggle to build bonds and relationships with other children he also fails to perform well academically child he just wasn't succeeding at any of the things on the contrary, however, his older brother excelled at like everything. He's in different clubs at school. He is an athlete. And with them being so close in age, they are in the same school. So a lot of the school staff would compare them. A lot of the other kids would make comparisons that, of course, would never end little James's favor. And this results in James becoming even more insecure about himself and just overall ashamed of himself and the person that he was growing up to be. He would oftentimes think of the things that his father would tell him how he lacked as a man and how when he grew up that if he did not change nobody would ever want to be with him like women would not love him he would be incapable of taking care of himself and providing for a family he really began to think that maybe his father was right up until his junior year of high school he did want those things he wanted to fit in he wanted to be seen as an admirable human being but when he got around his junior year, he just kind of gave up on that idea. He felt like I've gotten this far and I have not changed. Maybe this is just who I am. Maybe I'm just worthless, okay? Maybe I'll never be good enough. He gives up trying to fit in. He doesn't want to establish any relationships. He really becomes a learner at this point. At the age of 16, after having spent his entire life being tormented by his immediate family, he takes the sheet off of his little bed. He runs away from home, goes to a little park, and attempts to string himself up. But unfortunately or fortunately, depending upon how you look at it, 
This was yet another fail and he is extremely disappointed. It makes him feel even worse about himself. At this point, he's feeling like he can't do nothing right. Not even this. Now, I don't know if he gathered the little sheet and returned home or if he left it there in the park, but whatever the case, he does return home and resume his little miserable life like none of it had ever happened. He and his brother both complete high school and they go off to college. But this is yet another arena in which the two are compared with James, of course, being the one that is not as successful. Just as he had done in high school, he struggles academically and ends up dropping out after just two years. His brother, however, excels, of course, and he completes college, earning himself a degree in electrical engineering. This definitely deepens his resentment for his brother Leonard, but it does not compare to the amount of damage that is done once Leonard begins pursuing a young lady that James had developed feelings for. And it actually been one of the Few women in his lifetime that has showed him any kind of interest. Then she saw that brother child and she was like, you know what? Electrical engineer, you say? Now the two don't just date for a short period of time and piss off James. They actually get married and have eight children together. Big old happy family. Fast forward, the two of them are now adults. Leonard has his great job. He has a wife, all of these kids and is living his best life. Meanwhile, little James is out here struggling in the adult world. The adult version of his life was just as much of a struggle as the childhood version. He didn't get much taller. He was only five foot six. He was very small. He weighed 135 pounds. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you the story. He got these thick little glasses with the classic nerdy appearance. However, he just wasn't even all that smart. So it was like an illusion, if you will. He had been unsuccessful in just about every aspect of his life. He is now 40 years old. He's never been married. He doesn't have any children. He is unemployed and now he is living back at home with his mother charity who don't even like him like that he is spending most of his time in the public library and there is something going on with james that is a little strange he is extremely paranoid that his mother and brother are working with the fbi to sabotage what little he does have going for himself he is convinced that the few jobs that he was able to get he lost because of those reasons he believed that to be the reason behind the demise of his few social contacts, his once budding relationship with the woman who was now his brother's wife and baby mama, and even his car that has now begun to give him a little trouble. All of this, he felt like the FBI, his mother and his brother had something to do with. He really believed this. He did not think it was strange at all. He felt like it was the truth, child. He would tell people that the FBI had his phone tapped, that it wasn't even safe for him to use telephones in public because they also had them tapped. Everywhere he went, every restaurant, every bar, just literally anywhere, he believed that he was being followed and watched 24 seven. The only place that he seemed to get a peace of mind and a clear head was at target practice. He became an exceptional marksman. And it was the one and only thing in his entire life that made him feel like a man, like he was macho enough, good enough, and manly enough. James had a very impressive collection of firearms. And when he was not down to the bar or at the library he would spend a lot of his time on the riverbanks practicing shooting at empty cans it had easily become his favorite thing to do it takes his mind off of everything that is wrong in his life money being one of his biggest worries and when he takes most of the money that he has and invests it into the stock market right before it crashes he is really going through. He begins drinking heavily and he falls into one of the worst depressions, child. He is just really sad all the time. At this point, he trades in the library for the local bar. And this really irritated his mother, Charity, at this point because she's like, look, you are going down to the bar every night getting drunk and coming in my house really late. Like, I just don't appreciate it. Now, as adults, Leonard was a lot less horrible to James. He definitely matured and outgrew that bully the older brother role. He even helped to support James when he was financially in despair. He would let James borrow money when he really needed it, but James' inability to pay him back, it put a strain on their relationship. And after a while, Charity decides, you know what? I'm going to give him an ultimatum. He's not just going to sit around my house 
borrowing money from you and not doing anything to better his situation. He is going to have to gain some kind of independence, child, and get up out of my house. So she tells James, look, you are about to have to get a job or get out period. You have no other options. You cannot continue to stay here and live off of me. March 29th, 1975 is James's 41st birthday. He spends his evening all alone along the banks of the Great Miami River shooting empty cans, doing what he loves to do. That night he goes down to the 19th Hole Cocktail Lounge and decides he's gonna have himself a couple of drinks, okay? It's his birthday. This is a bar that he frequented a lot. Ever since he had begun drinking, he was going here almost every day. He has himself a couple of drinks and he opens up to one of the bartenders about his impending eviction and how his mother has been on him just about every day constantly telling him that if he had money to go down to the bar baby he should have a little rent money as well and of course he tells the bar employee that he needs to find a solution like that is his main priority that's what's on his mind james leaves the bar at 11 p.m and returns just a few hours later when he returns, the same bar employee that he had spoken to before asks him if he had found a solution and James says, no, not yet. He has a seat, goes back to having himself a couple of drinks and celebrating his birthday and continues to drink until the bar closes at 2.30. Now the following day is Easter Sunday and sis is hung over like clothing on a laundry line. Okay, so he spends most of his morning and his afternoon in bed recovering. As you know, with limited funds, I'm pretty sure he probably was drinking the cheap stuff. And if you're a drinker, you know that when you drink a little cheap, it often hits you a little harder the next day. Meanwhile, Leonard Jr., his wife, and their eight children, they all go to church. Charity is downstairs setting up an Easter egg hunt for her grandchildren. So after church, they meet over at her house to, you know, carry on with the rest of the Easter activities. After the egg hunts, they go inside, they have dinner together. Meanwhile, James is still upstairs in his slumber. The adults, they laugh and have conversation in the kitchen while half of the kids are in the kitchen with the adults. The other half are entertaining each other in the living room laughing, you know, as children do, which is beginning to disrupt the slumber that James is in upstairs. Hearing the joyful noise of his little family downstairs, James wakes up at about 4 p.m. He sits on the edge of his bed for a couple of minutes, gathering himself, and then he proceeds to go downstairs into the kitchen. He talks to his brother about politics and the stock market. He interacts with his nieces and nephews for a little bit, looking at their little prizes from their Easter egg hunt. Just, you know, being a good, involved interactive uncle nothing out of the norm after spending a good little amount of time with his family he tells them that he's about to step out and go do some target practice and then goes back upstairs into his bedroom james loads his 357 caliber magnum two 22 caliber pistols and a rifle fully armed he heads downstairs enters the kitchen and without any kind of warning and without a word or any hesitation at all shoots his brother leonard standing next to his brother was his brother's wife he then fires at her then his mother his nephew and two of his nieces he then goes into the living room and takes out his remaining nieces and nephews he circles back through the kitchen and then back into the living room, taking out anybody that he saw still moving. And within five minutes of him coming downstairs, every member of his family is gone. In total, he had fired 35 rounds alternating between all four of his weapons apparently nobody from the neighborhood heard any of them though nobody called the police none of the neighbors come over to see what's going on literally nothing james sits inside of the house enjoying the silence for the next three hours when finally he decides that it's time to call the police. He calls 911 at approximately 9.41 p.m. And in the calmest, lightest voice simply says, there's been a shooting. The police tell him that they are on the way, child. He does not attempt to run or flee the scene or anything. He just calmly sits there and waits on them to arrive. Now, people were shocked to find out that he had 
done this because the people that knew him did not think that he was capable of such violence. I guess they didn't know sis was an Aries child. James is arrested and charged with 11 counts of aggravated homicide. Now granted he allowed them to arrest him without incident. He refuses to answer any questions asked by the police. It makes it very clear that he plans on pleading not guilty by reason of insanity. Throughout his trial, he continued to remain silent about his motives and his feelings. He gives investigators little to no insight into his little psyche and what was going on in that big head of his. Originally, he is found guilty on 11 counts in the first degree and receives 11 life sentences. However, because the trial was held in the same county as his hometown and where the crime had taken place. And with all of the media attention that it got, it is decided that the trial was unfair and declared a mistrial. So he got lucky. The second trial was moved to Finlay, Finlay, Ohio, about 125 miles away to try to, you know, make it a little bit more fair. Now with the second trial and a little bit more time to prepare, the prosecutors are able to gather a little bit more information about James's massacre okay they had spoken with the bar employee that he had spoken to the night before he carried out his crime when he talked about his problem with his mother needing to be solved asap they also found out that he stood to inherit about three hundred thousand dollars through life insurance policies, real estate savings accounts, and other small investments owned by his mother and his brother. So he had hoped on getting that not guilty by reason of insanity. And if that was the case, even though he had done what he had done, he still stood a chance of inheriting all this money. He figured he would go to be rehabilitated in a little hospital for a little while and within a couple of years be released back into society as a wealthy man. Now, when they accuse him of this, in court he of course denies all of it he says that he had no forethought whatsoever about the actions that had taken place that day like he really he didn't know what was going to happen until it happened he just snapped the second trial, it wraps up with him receiving 11 life sentences to be served consecutively. So he was pretty much screwed, child. Because you serve one life sentence and you got 11 more after the fact. He does not settle for this. He says, oh no, baby, I cannot do a life sentence and then 10 more after that. So he appeals the court's decision and is granted a new trial, another trial, a third trial that takes place in 1982. He and his lawyer both felt like that was not a reasonable sentence for somebody who's saying they, they are insane. Like, why are y'all not listening to me when I say I am not all there upstairs? Like, girl, get somebody in here to evaluate me. I can prove it. I'm not dealing with a full deck. I promise. His attorney believed in their ability to prove this to the courts so much that he puts forth his own money to hire a psychologist to come in and evaluate James. He actually didn't even hire one. He hired several from around the country. The money is not spent in vain. A three-judge panel ends up ruling that he was in fact guilty for his mother and his brother, the very first two, but none of the others. For the other nine, they rule him not guilty by reason of insanity. He is given two life sentences and admitted into a Ohio state prison on July 30th of 1982, where he actually still resides to this day and has been denied parole at each hearing since he, you know, got his little cell number. His next hearing is scheduled for February of 2025 and he will be 90 years old. This was him last year, child. Look at him. James refuses to speak to any of the media or anybody for that matter. He is living out the rest of his days in the same quiet, meek, reserved demeanor he's always had. He has never shown any kind of remorse or emotion regarding his actions and appears to be quite content with what he's done. Like he does not appear to regret any of the things. It ain't like he could hold a job on the outside anyway, child. So he probably is fine with his three hots and a cot at no expense to him. Now, a year after the incident, the house was reopened to the public and an auction was held and it sold all of the contents inside. It was then cleaned out. The wood flooring was so deeply bloodstained that it had to be completely replaced. An unexpected new family arrived into the neighborhood and they rent the house out from this guy that had purchased it 
but he didn't want to live in himself. He decided he wanted to rent it out. Now the family is completely oblivious to the shocking happenings that had gone down. Now when the family first moved in, they were extremely excited to be settling into their new home in this new town, getting a fresh start at life, a new leash, if you will. And child, they had gotten this home at a really good price, so they were real happy. However, shortly after moving in, they began to hear these strange noises coming from within their new home. And not only that, the lights would turn on and off, doors would slam closed unexpectedly, and then they would hear thumping sounds on the stairs as if someone was coming down the steps, but nobody would be there. None of these strange happenings could be explained. Needless to say, not long after moving in, that family moves out. They were the first family to move in and be spooked by these paranormal, supernatural activities, but they were not the last. Several families actually move in after them, and each time they would claim to hear and experience the same type of events, and then they would move out because they would be so spooked by it. Some families even claimed to have heard voices coming from within the house. Now, because the house had begun to, you know, gather up herself a little nasty reputation for being haunted, it eventually became really difficult for the man to rent the house out to anybody, so it went unoccupied for years. Finally, a woman woman does purchase the home and she is actually the current occupant. She claims that she's never experienced anything, no paranormal activity whatsoever. And she does not believe that anybody who lived in the house prior to her had any experiences for real. In her opinion, they moved in and heard what happened and then they just wanted to be out of the house. I want to know what you think. Do you think the house was really haunted or do you think the people moved in not knowing what happened and once they found out what happened there because you know the girls like to chat. They wanted to move out because they were uncomfortable. I could understand not wanting to live in a house like that. Y'all, let me tell y'all how I almost lost my life to crush from Finding Nemo. So let me insert this video. So the first day we get down to Hawaii, we go on the beach, obviously, because that's what you do. I took this video, posted it to my Instagram. I'm like, oh my God, he's so cute. If I was down there in the water, I would pet him. If you go over there, don't pet them. It's like a thousand dollar fine if they catch you touching the turtles. What happens when the turtle touch you though? That's what I want to know. But anyway, we'll get there. I see him. I think it's the coolest thing ever because he is huge. And in my mind, I'm like a nature kind of girl. Like, aside from a kakarocha, if I see something cool like this in nature in my mind, I'm a natural girl. So I'm going to try to, you know, be one with nature, I guess, touch him and stuff. I'm like, dang, I wish I was down in the ocean. I could touch him and stuff. Like, I wish I could be down there with him. Child, fast forward about two days. This is me. This is me and Maya way out to sea. Amanda took this video. My oldest sister Amanda took this video. Maya had this great idea for us to get these floats where I'm going to put up, I'm going to insert a picture so you can see the position you are in inside of this float. So we got our little cocktails and we are floating in the ocean. We are far out having the, the time of our life. The depth of the ocean where I'm at had to be like the 12 feet to put it in like pool terms. I'm far out. Like my feet have left the ground a long way back. Somehow Amanda and Maya have gotten like away from me. But I'm I'm facing them and I see something emerge from the water like in between us. And I say to myself, what the fuck is that? I was real suspicious because I had not seen anything go down. But I just saw something come up. So I'm looking and I don't see anything. I'm still looking though and eventually I'm getting comfortable because I don't see anything else, but I'm still floating to where, you know, that little area is within my vision, child. Like, clear line of vision. So if it comes back, I'm going to see it, but it doesn't come back. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, I'm tripping. Never occurred to me that this thing could be swimming toward me. As soon as I reach, like, 99% comfortability. This huge green sea turtle emerges from the water right next to me. I begin kicking, flailing my arms, and screaming to the top of my lungs. I know the people at the shore had to have thought it was a shark out there. When I tell you I was screaming my head off, and I'm really freaking out because I'm on this float <laughs> and I ain't moving. As much as I'm kicking and swinging my arms, girl, I'm not moving. 
I'm not moving away from the turtle. And as loud as I am, the turtle ain't moving away from me. He's sitting there with his mouth open, cocked open, like he is ready to devour mother in all of her golden glory, along with my cocktail that was in the cup holder. Now Maya is like, I'm coming, Brittany. I don't know what I expected to happen when she got there, but it sounded good in the moment. So I'm like, okay. She's like, calm down, I'm coming. So she is swimming, girl, swimming toward me. So eventually it goes back underwater and she gets to me and she's just like, where is it? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like crying at this point. I'm like, I don't know. It's huge. And she's like, girl, okay. Fast forward about five minutes. It rears its ugly head back from the water, but it had moved down just a little bit. And she is like, oh my God, it's huge. I'm like, girl, you did all that to come over here to me like you was going to save me and you scared too. So now we just both scared. And I didn't want to get off of my flow because... Common sense, like that's how people drown when they panic. I was obviously panicking and I don't want to drown because I'm panicking. But then I'm stuck on the float and I can't move away from this thing. I'm at its mercy. And so I'm just like, you know what? It's probably not going to harm me. So I probably should just stick it out on this float and be scared. And so that's what just happened. I was just floating, girl, in the specific ocean at the mercy of a green sea turtle. It finally eventually moved away. And you know what I realized just now? Maya is always around when some sea creature comes at me she was the one that was there when i got stung by the damn jellyfish last year i'm not getting back in the damn ocean with maya every time i'm swimming in the ocean with maya maya vaughn every time i'm swimming in the ocean with you girl something happens to me and that is not a coincidence child you add water to maya she just becomes bad luck Ugh. Anyway, something really cool that did happen in the ocean was Maya had picked up this chunk of coral with her feet, child. And she was like, look, it's a rock. I'm like, girl, it's not a rock, it's coral. And she looking at it and it was like these weird different colors. And when she handed it to me, I noticed there was these tiny little baby crabs on it. And girl, when they started crawling up my hand, girl, I had to just drop their girl down in the ocean because I don't play them the reindeer games. I don't know what you're trying to do. I ain't never had crabs and I'm not trying to get them today. I really be thinking I'm like, a nature girl, but I'd be just scared of everything, child. Scared of all the things. Maybe I just wish I was a nature girl. But overall, our sister trip was amazing. The only person we were missing was Melissa with her bald headed ass. She did not come. She made an excuse to not come with us and dropped off of the trip last minute. But myself, Amanda, and Maya had a ball and we took Violet, my niece. She had fun too. All of the locals over there in Hawaii seems so peaceful laid back like those girls cannot have high blood pressure i just don't think so they just all seem so carefree like even the people who live there but are not from there they just seem so i don't know unproblematic i love the vibe over there i really genuinely did like everybody was minding their own business i'm glad we had a good time i'm glad i went and we had a good time because i really really almost wanted to cancel my trip look at really sick right before it was time for me to go but i think he was just putting on a stunt to try to keep me from going anyway that is pretty much it for this video and this story i hope you guys enjoyed the video and this look y'all see i'm a brown skin girl now you know mother got a little tan until this tan fades i am caramel delight so please address me as such in the comments um yeah let me show y'all my nails before i go Sade is a nail tech here in houston and she is not just a nail tech child she is a nail shop owner i had actually been looking on instagram two days straight for a nail tech here in houston because i wanted to get back into acrylics i don't know what be going on in these shops nowadays it's like Girl, you're not allowed to blink. Don't bring a water, but bring something to drink because you can't get dehydrated. Leave your kids outside. It's just too much going on with the rules. And I'm just like, girl, y'all be doing too much. Too much is being done. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to give up. I'm about to go back to press on. And literally the next day after I had spent two days and gave up, she DM'd me on Instagram and was like, hey, love your videos. I would love to work with you and do your nails. And I'm just like, girl, you right on time. Like, did God send you, girl? How you know I needed you right now in this moment? So I went to her to get my vacation nails on. I love them. They're so cute. It's like the little crocodile with the little crystals. The only thing about life since having these is a lot of people want to touch your nails. Why? Why do people be wanting to touch you? There have been so many people who are just like, can I touch your nails? I'm like, girl, no, we in a whole panorama. Do not touch my hands with your hands. I don't know what's on your hands. One lady, I was literally at a restaurant and she said, I just want to touch your nails. And I kid you not, I swear to you, by the time she got, I just, she was already touching my damn nails. Talking about, I, 
I just want to touch your nails. Girl, I'm about to use these hands to eat with. What is wrong with you? I just don't understand you girls who do that. Like, don't ask somebody, can you touch their hair or their nails or their skin, girl? I might look like caramel, but I'm, I'm not made of it. Just, just look like this for the next like week because God knows it's not going to last. Anyway, I appreciate you guys so much for spending your time with me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one on Thursday. Peace. What is up, you two? Welcome back to my channel. If where's my mic? Oh my god, to be close. I believe that's his last name. There's two P's, so we're gonna roll with the Rupert. James is born the second. Ugh. Little James is born the second son to a couple by the name of. Okay, no. Brown skin girl. What the hell is that in the bottom of my cup? It's getting very did not have running water. It did not have indoor plumbing. I wonder if that's the same thing. Like, is that the same thing? Made him a very easy tall, ugh, tall get. Girl. Okay, the two and the two. Ugh. Eight children together. The whole Brady Bunch. Well, they were really salt. Oh, whatever. Bless your baba. Blue has entered the jet. After spending some, okay. After spending a short little amount of, okay. After spending some, ugh, he is given two life sentences and checks into a whole, a whole, whole uh, I can to say Ohio. Anyway, something really cool that did happen in the ocean was, damn, I just scratched my lip.